I have returned to the scene of the crime. The 17% win rate that North America put up in Worlds 2022 in the group stage. The worst performance we have ever had in the history of Worlds. And I know what you're thinking. David, please do not try and hype us up for Worlds this year after last year. I'm sorry, it's my job. I'm the hopium guy. I don't lose faith until the very last moment. I didn't lose faith last year until we were knocked out even despite all the crap. I was still down on the floor with my flag, carrying it proudly. And I'm here to give you hope again for this year and explain to you why we can make it out. Purely by numbers, not even by trying to sell you that we're better than JDG or any of the top teams, like just from a pure number point of view of why it's more likely that we can make it out this year than in prior years and why last year might have even been an anomaly compared to the normal trend. So I pulled all the data starting from 2015 and that's where we'll begin. 2015, we missed the knockout stage of Worlds. The first time I think that Cloud9 had missed it. I'm not 100% certain on like the full history behind it. This is all I had time to look up prior to this. But notably, we had a 33% win rate. TSM had their worst year at Worlds at the time. Cloud9 went three and three, CLG went two and four. I'm not gonna spend too much time on these or elaborate on the history, it's just about the numbers. So just remember, 33% win rate. I'll put it up on screen later in case you forget. Jump to 2016, the year that TSM was supposedly one of the top four teams at Worlds, according to the scrim rumors, according to everybody talking about the tournament. It was my first Worlds, everybody was hyped up. We went nine and nine, 50% win rate. TSM didn't make it out, but Cloud9 did. We avoided two years in a row of not making it, thank Christ and 50%. Respectable, we didn't win our quarterfinal matchup, but hey, overall not too bad. 2017, we make it out again, but this time notably worse than the prior year. It's once again C9, but the important part is 44% win rate. We're under 50%, which is fine given that we have three teams. Only one needs to make it out for North America to realistically be happy. That's proven itself over time. So 44% win rate, Cloud9 gets out going three and three. TSM does not make it out going three and three. I believe they lost in the tiebreaker that year. And then Immortals went two and four. So overall worse than the prior year, but yeah, we still made it out, so it's fine. 2018, our golden standard as North American fans at Worlds. Quite frankly, the best year we've ever had in terms of the excitement, the hype, we made it to semifinals, but that part's irrelevant. We're just focusing on groups of which we did a similar thing to what we've done before. 50% win rate. We did that just a few years prior and we did it again here. Notably Cloud9 going four and two, having one of the best records in group stage in recent years. Team Liquid notably going three and three and not making it out. And then 100 Thieves going two and four, which sucked, but hey, one team got out and they made it to semifinals and we've been chasing that high ever since because from here, the numbers start getting abysmal. 2019, the exact opposite of what 2018 was able to give us. We had very high highs prior to this coming off the semifinal, G, uh, not G2, Jesus, well, G2 and TL at finals at MSI. So we were living life high coming in, even though TL was kind of like starting to slip towards the end of summer. The worst win rate at that point in time that we had ever seen at Worlds. A five and 13 record, 28% win rate. It was horrible. Cloud9, two and four, Clutch, 0 oh and six, and Team Liquid, again, three and three, failing to make it out. You'll start to notice a trend here with Team Liquid, but the point is that our win rate was abysmal. Now, if you take Clutch out of that, is it as bad? No, but you can't really just take away the bad parts of this and keep the good. You can't be selective with that data as long as it's in group stage because I'm not counting Golden Guardians this year and they're 03 to start. Jump forward to 2020, the <laughs> a year that Cloud9 fans are not gonna wanna remember and they might not remember Worlds because they weren't there. They failed in summer split, which kind of damper dampened people's expectations of the region and quite frankly, for good reason, for good reason going into playoffs or going into Worlds. Team Liquid would once again go three and three, fail to make it out. The most famous play that North America has ever had at Worlds for all the wrong reasons. Will you stop honking? You're not going anywhere. The Owen Sick, speaking 10 man sleep. It was bad, but weirdly enough, and again, I'm not gonna be selective with the data and like picking like cherry pick here, but FlyQuest also went three and three. So you had TL and FlyQuest both go three and three and not get out, but then you had, C you had TSM just kind of shit in the bed. So it made the win rate worse than our overall performance was, which was definitely a bounce back compared to prior years. A 33% win rate. So we were trending up just a little bit, but trending up. It spoke more to our depth as a region, which 
is continuously a problem. 2021, finally, we make it out of groups again for the first time since 2018. And dear God, could you feel the relief on people's faces? I mean, even I was like really like doomer out after that first week. And luckily Cloud9 were able to scratch it back thanks to an FPX absolute collapse. But hey, you got out, that's all that matters. 44% win rate across all of our teams. C9 actually had, you are never gonna believe this, the worst record of ev of any North American team that attended Worlds that year. They were two and four, they got out. Team Liquid and Hunter Thieves, who both went three and three, did not. Now you understand why the Team Liquid three and three curse exists? Yeah, so look, whether you consider C9 a fluke or not, overall, our performance at Worlds was actually not bad compared to like prior years, especially as we're continuing to ramp up. So this year, 44%, again, still going up, barely. You know, you would hope it continues to build and you would hope we get to 50% the next year. But the problem is uh, the, the next year took place right over there. Every single team went one in five. Our worst performance at Worlds ever. We've never been worse. This combined with a bunch of negative stuff around the LCS in general just made last year like towards the end of group stage almost unbearable. The only positive thing was like, yes, we still had finals and a bunch of other events to still go around here. But if you were a, just an LCS fan and you weren't attending any of the events, it was dire. But now the question remains, we are in a new format. All of these numbers are technically irrelevant, but I do think it is worth paying attention to. So just recapping, putting the final numbers here. We have never made it out of group stage or now Swiss stage with less than a 40% win rate. If we have above 40%, we have always made it, every time. So as a region, it shows our collective strength. And quite frankly, I think that makes sense that the stronger your region is as a whole, the more wins you pick up overall, the more likely you are to make it out. Makes sense. But this year's format is different. So <laughs> the worst possible outcome, I'll get the Doomer stuff out of the way first. Luckily, we cannot have a team go winless. It is literally impossible because say we have three teams and say all three lose their first two matchups, there, we would have three out of four North American teams in that like zero two best of three set and North America would have to play itself in some capacity and we'd guarantee ourselves two wins no matter what. So, hey, we ain't going winless. It's not possible. That said, it is possible to go winless against everybody but North America. The worst record that we can possibly have is two and 12. That would give us a 14% win rate, less than the prior year, 0 and 10 against anybody that's not LCS, and quite frankly would be the, <laughs> I, I don't know how to explain how bad that would be for us as a region, but I don't think that happens. Here's the thing though, we can actually make it out of Swiss stage this year with less than a 40% win rate, which has never gotten us out before. How? Well, two teams automatically go out and drop, bomb out 0-4. So they have that record no matter what. The other North American team we've already established has to get at least two wins to be able to make sure that they're uh, secured in that fashion. But say, you know, all of our teams start 0-2, but then one team is able to climb out. That means that they're going to have to have a minimum six wins. That would mean we would have a six and 19, or that would mean we have a six and 13 record, giving us a 31% win rate, but also allowing us to get out. Now, is that gonna be what actually happens? Typically, no. Typically we'll have, we should have something a little bit better than that, which could skew these results. It could mean that we have over a 40% win rate and get out. There's a chance that by some miracle, we're amazing and best of ones, we go all the way up and we have two wins, but then you lose two, for six games and you have a two and six record, which granted is not as bad as zero oh and four in terms of, the point is the, the numbers and like the stats can get funny. So it's gonna be difficult to compare this year to prior years in terms of like the win percentage. But the point is it's actually more realistic for us to get out now than it ever has been assuming the gap between us and our top teams in Europe is not as far as we think that it is and we can steal one off of a collapsing either LPL or LCK. Now. For the trend that I showed earlier, and I'll put it back. Look, 2019, I think, was like our low, low, excluding last year. And we were trending up from there. Like, it was like, you're going up, 2019 happens, you fall down, and we're slowly start trending up, but last year we fall down again. I don't know what happened last year. I don't know why it was so bad. And I'm praying to God that new management with NRG, with Andy Miller and crew, means that this year might be different. These are the risks you take when filming outside in New York City in a very populous area. I don't even think you can get through that traffic. Am I telling you to have absolute faith after last year? No, I understand if you're gonna be pessimistic and doubtful, but if you look back even further, 
we've been at this low low before and we've rebounded and come back not saying that we've made it out to you know semifinals or anything like that but we do stand a chance as long as we're on the rift we could possibly win it we've never had two massively bad years in a row even if we've had two years where we miss getting out hopefully we've learned our lesson and i have faith so while i'm not telling you to put all three teams out in your pickums i damn well did because you know you know what you know what i got faith and that's all you need to have. As NRG's been saying, and this is their motto this entire time, why not us, huh? Why not? They're new to the league, why not? Nobody else but C9 has ever made it out of group stage, so why not them? Everybody else has tried and failed, but I got faith in our teams. You should too. So quit with the negativity, start having some hopium, and just pick our teams. Have fun with it, come on.